Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Brian Jester, co-founder here at Occupy Fantasy. And we're back this time with some NFL DFS picks and lineup advice for the single-game showdown slate for FanDuel and DraftKings for Thursday night's matchup between the Dolphins and the Jaguars. In this video, we're going to look at some top plays, talk about some lineup strategies for low-risk and high-risk contests for FanDuel and DraftKings. We're going to talk about some projected ownership and our preferred options at the captain and MVP spots on both sites. Before we get started, though, go ahead and click that subscribe button below. That way you get access to all of our latest videos as soon as they're released. Give us a thumbs up. If you like this video, the more thumbs ups that we get, the more likely we are to do these types of videos. So it helps us. Appreciate that. Any questions you have about this slate, hop in the comments below, and we'll answer them before the slate locks Thursday night. Now, full, full thoughts on this slate will be in the daily plug, OccupyFantasy.com. The Occupy model ranks every single player on the slate. I almost said fighter. I had MMA and UFC in my mind. I almost said every single fighter on the slate, but every single player on the slate is ranked. FanDuel and DraftKings, Occupy Model, OccupyFantasy.com. And again, be sure to check out our ultimate showdown guide, uh, the captain spot. Uh, you can get that 15-chapter uh, ebook on how to tackle showdown contests. All these links are in the description, so go check it out. All right, so this game has seen some crazy movements in the betting market since Lions opened Sunday night. Now, the total opened at 44 points. Jacksonville opened as a two-point favorite. Now, as of the time of this recording, recording this Wednesday afternoon, the total is up to 48 and a half. So it's a four and a half point jump in just a few days. That's really big. And Jacksonville is now a three-point favorite, so a one-point move there. So really interesting to think about the betting markets for this game and what that means for our lineups. So let's start with low-risk contests. These are our 50-50s, our double-ups, our head-to-heads. Contest where half the field gets paid. Now, if you've read our showdown guide, uh, where we have a couple chapters in depth on low risk contests, you know that we want to try to lock up all the scoring on the slate if we can. And what does that mean? Try to get both quarterbacks and both running backs, or at least the main running backs. That way, when a touchdown is scored, we likely have that player in our lineups. The one issue with this game is that Miami is using a bit of a three headed running back attack. Miles Gaskin is technically their lead back. And if we bring him up here, he has had 27 of the running back opportunities for Miami this year. 11 of those are targets, which gives him uh, a nice floor and ceiling on DraftKings. Matt Breida, the backup. Let's bring him up. 14 opportunities. If we can find Matt Breida here. There he is. $1,800. So for seven opportunities a game, pretty, pretty cheaply priced. And then we have Jordan Howard, who's actually priced more. Because Howard, despite only having... 13 opportunities this year. Five of those were in the red zone, and all five of those were within the five-yard line. So the clear goal line back on this team. So if we play Miles Gaskin, who's technically the lead back as part of our two-quarterback, two-running back strategy, we may not get all the touchdowns because they could end up in the red zone, and then Jordan Howard plunges over the line for one yard and uh, improves on his 0 0.8 yards per carry this year. So it's really tough. But again, we're not going to be able to capture every touchdown all the time. But if we can get, let's go to our flex spots, and we get Minshew, Fitzpatrick, James Robinson, who's the clear bell cow for Jacksonville, and let's say Miles Gaskin, that leaves us $6,900 left per player. Very nice for any captain, any flex, and we can fill in with defenses, kickers, some other role players to give us a really nice floor for these types of contests. If we go over to FanDuel, it's roughly the same. It's not that hard. So Minshew, Fitzpatrick, James Robinson, the three highest priced players on the slate, Gaskin is relatively cheap. Again, this is a half-point PPR site. Touchdowns are worth more. So Gaskin, not as great of a play here on FanDuel. So let's say 10K. That leaves us 5,000 per player. We can go with a punt play here and fill it in. Other option, maybe we go with Jordan Howard. We think you, for whatever reason, think he's going to get more goal line opportunities in this game. Or we could go with Brita. But either one of these guys, 7K, Howard's 8,500. We go with one of these guys. Let's say we go... Brita, that gives us 8K left per player. If we go with Howard, that gives us $6,500 left per player. A little bit better punts because the punts in this, and when we say punts, it means the low price plays who so were just playing purely for salary reasons aren't that great in this game. So maybe this is the way to go. Uh, so as it usually is, a little easier on DraftKings to play our low risk contests. Now, high risk contests, the, uh, the quarterbacks are going to be popular here. Minshew, and Fitzpatrick, uh, because no receiver has really stood out yet. Both of these quarterbacks are spreading the ball out 
a ton. Miami has five players between 11 and 16 targets through two weeks this year. Jacksonville, just one player has more than eight targets. That's Keelan Cole. Raise your hand if you had Keelan Cole as the target leader for Jacksonville through two weeks. So, uh, again, the, the ball is likely going to be spread around. And if the ball is spread around and no player catches, you know, gets a majority of the production, no player catches multiple touchdowns, we may see the quarterbacks be the optimal captains and MVPs. And they're going to be popular. So we, that wouldn't be a great scenario for high-risk contests. So we need to look at some of these position players who do have the ability, whether they've underperformed or whether just pure variants have a chance uh, to get into the end zone multiple times or rack up 100-plus receiving yards in this game. So a couple guys that come to mind. For me, uh, we'll, we'll stay on Fandle just because we're here. Uh, we talked about Keelan Cole already. Uh, DJ Chark, Devontae Parker. Chark, very efficient so far, has caught all of his targets. The problem is he's only seen seven targets. He does lead the team in air yards, but it's not that many. And I, I think a lot of people who drafted him in their season-long drafts have been underwhelmed by his performances so far, especially his target share and his air yard share of this offense. But as we know, we've talked about this before in our previous shows, through the first four weeks of the season, average draft position is a much better predictor of future fantasy success than year-to-date numbers. So we're only through two weeks, which means if we're trying to project week three, in fact, average draft position is a better projector of week three value and beyond than the first two weeks. So if that's the case, we should be playing Chark more than Keelan Cole. So something to think about. Now, once we get past that week four mark, that's generally the, the level of data that's needed to be predictive, then ADP goes out the window. So uh, something to keep in mind as you're building. Devontae Parker, second on the team in targets, second on the team in air yards, does have one touchdown this year. He can always, uh, especially with his rapport with Fitzpatrick, could get into the end zone a couple times. He's an option. The, guy, the two guys we like the most from this game and the fact that we have to scroll down to find one of them is great, is Preston Williams. Now, if you listen to our podcast, go check it out. Subscribe in your favorite podcast app or here on YouTube. Uh, we talk about our underperforming receivers every week. These are guys who are getting opportunities in the passing game uh, and not converting for a wide variety of reasons. Normally, we need three weeks of data, so we're almost there. But it's still encouraging to see Preston Williams have uh, the, the team lead in air yards, as I'm pulling it up here on my end. Uh, he's, if you look at his targets, where they've occurred, uh, how many targets he's had, he's expected to have scored about 23 fantasy points so far this year, but he's only scored nine. So that type of underperforming difference is pretty big. So if he continues to get this type of opportunity, he's eventually going to have a blow-up game, kind of balance it out. We hope that it's on Thursday night. Should get plenty of opportunities here. Preston Williams, a great option in your high-risk contest. The other guy, and if you if you watched our videos or if you read our daily plug on Monday, Darren Waller, we mentioned, is basically a receiver at tight end. In a showdown contest, we typically don't play tight ends at MVP or captain just because, historically, they don't get into the optimal lineup at that position very often. But when you have tight ends that are basically receivers, Darren Waller's one, Travis Kelsey's another, Mike Gesicki's actually another one of those types of players. Of all of his plays on the field this year, 92% he's been either in the slot or out wide as a receiver. Legitimately just a receiver playing the tight end position, uh, listed as a tight end. And it goes to show he leads the team in targets, leads the team in red zone targets, had a monster game last week, and is basically a receiver that we get to play at tight end. So while most people are hesitant to click the tight end in their captain and MVP spots, and generally for good reason, we need to take advantage when these guys are available on showdown slates that actually have wide receiver one or two usage. And Gasicki is one of them. Like him on DraftKings a little bit more, but again, a captain or MVP option in our high-risk contest. Uh, last guy to talk about, we did, we did mention James Robinson uh, at the beginning of this video, but he's absolutely dominated opportunities in this Jacksonville backfield. Week one, it made sense. They were winning most of the game. Week two, a bit surprising. They were trailing pretty much the whole game. He still out-snapped, out-touched, out-targeted Chris Thompson, the so-called receiving back for them. So, so Robinson is actually getting all the opportunities here. If you look at targets plus running back rushing attempts, Robinson has 37 to Chris Thompson's eight. He's dominating in, in a game where the line is moving in favor of Jacksonville, now three-point favorites. Robinson, one of the best MVP and captain options on the slate, especially if this game goes under the total. So 
Uh, all right, I hope this video gives you some foundational pieces to work with for your showdown lineups for FanDuel and DraftKings. For in-depth thoughts on every player on the slate, check out the daily plug, OccupyFantasy.com, the Thursday night edition where I wrote it, and talk about more detailed lineup strategies for your low-risk and high-risk contests. Check out the showdown guide on our site, co-authored with Justin Freeman of The Captain Spot, 15 chapters of very in-depth uh, historical research for single-game contests. Go check that out as well. And our Occupy model has every player on the range. can't figure out which player to play in your lineup. Go to the Occupy model, see which one ranks higher. All right, before we get out of here, do us a favor, click that subscribe button, get access to all of our videos as soon as they're released. There should be an MMA, or I guess a UFC 253 video coming out later this weekend. Of course, we'll have uh, more showdown videos in the coming weeks and days. So go ahead and subscribe, give us a thumbs up, get more videos like this. Any questions you have, we're happy to answer them. Get in that comment section before the slate locks Thursday night. All right, Brian Jester for Occupy Fantasy. Appreciate you listening. Good luck. And we'll talk to you soon.